Hi all, um, thank you for being here. Today let's talk about uh, maximizing your uh, Dr. Lockham experience, tips for success. Thank you so much for watching my other video on a step-by-step process on how to apply for a Lockham job. So today, if you're a doctor that's looking to make the most out of your Lockham experience, or you're a doctor that has been signed up um, to start uh, your Lockham gig, and you're just looking for tips on how to ensure that you're successful, that you do a good job, that you enjoy your time at that Lockham uh, position, this video is for you. I'll talk about some of the tips that I have personally used that I have found to be extremely, extremely helpful that has allowed me to enjoy my Lockham gigs, but at the same time, leave the place, you know, the experience has been so good that I've been able to go back again and again for various gigs just by, you know, giving my best, ensuring that um, I am enjoying my time, but at the same time, I'm providing an important service to, to the hospital that I've, the hospitals that I've worked at. My name is Anna. If you're watching me for the very first time, welcome. And if you're my returning subscriber, thank you so much. And thank you for those that raised this question of uh, covering this topic of law coming in Australia as a doctor. So let's just dig into it um, quickly and, um, and learn one or two things. So exciting times. You've got your law come gig ready to go. Remember, like I always say, preparation is key. So you may be law coming for various reasons. Many people law come for various reasons, and it is important to understand why are you law coming? Why are you choosing to law come this time of the year, this place that you're working at? Some people law come for financial reason, like let's say you've set yourself that you want to law come, get some income for this period of time. Some people actually just decide, this is my life. I want to law come forever. I want to have that flexibility to be at work for this amount of time and then just take time to do other things that I actually enjoy. Some people law come because they want to use that opportunity to travel along as they work. And people may decide to do the van life as they travel. People may decide to travel across Australia by, you know, uh, by using a camper, camper, you know, a trailer and stuff like that. But as they travel, because they are not working, they want to have an income to sustain them, to allow them to even do the touring and stuff like that and actually enjoy themselves. So you may be law coming for various reasons and whatever it is, the other you know, some people may say, look, I just want to law come in regional because I want to work on my skill set. I want to, you know, work at improving, you know, my um, uh, central IV excesses. I want to work on, um, you know, working in the regional hospitals just to see how life is out there. And some people may actually just be trialing up the place so that they decide, is this what I want to do in the long term? Whatever reason you're traveling for Lockham, it can be a very exciting time of your life. And so today I want to pack you up with the important tips that I will ensure that you are very, very successful in whatever you decide to do. I've already talked about importantly looking for a Lockham agency that will meet your needs because if you get yourself in the wrong agency, you may end up securing the wrong jobs. You may have very less support from your agencies in negotiating for things like accommodation, travel, things like meals and stuff like that. So it's very important to choose an agency that works best for you. I think we've covered that in the other, um, in the other video. The other thing, obviously, um, that, you know, um, to ensure that you are um, optimizing or maximizing on your locum gig is understand your contract, understand what is expected of you, understand at the end of the day what you're expected to do and understand your role really well, because that will eventually, you know, um, ensure that you're actually enjoying your locum gig. Imagine if you took up a job and you didn't realize that your skills were not suitable to that role. You'll be miserable. You will not, you'll not feel supported. You will not enjoy it because remember at the end of the day, you want to enjoy your time, your locuming time, and you want to enjoy hanging out with new colleagues that you meet along the way. And then obviously, um, you know, the other things that you must, must, must put in place 
are your indemnities, um, your certificates, and all that. That we have covered already, but just if you haven't, you know, watched my other video, remember to put in your registrations to ensure that your indemnities are up to date, to ensure that, you know, certifications like SCLS, trauma, and all that are up to date, mandatory reporting for kids, sexual assault, and stuff like that. You're up to date and you understand the processes. Now, the important thing, the important part of this video is during your placement, what are some of the things that I, as uh, Dr. Anna, I have used to ensure that I made an impact and that I actually enjoyed myself at the end of the day? The biggest one for me was to understand the hospital policies and procedures. You need to understand what hospital you are at. You need to understand what level of care can this hospital offer? Understanding that will ensure that you've um, you 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 know what. Uh, and I give a good example. Like let's say you're a medical registrar, okay? You're a med reg and you're admitting from ED. It is important to understand what is the policy of your department. Which patients that have DKA can you admit or which patients need to remain in uh, ED? Which patients need to go to HDU? Which patients need to go to the ward? If you do not understand this, you'll start, you know, knocking heads. You will start getting in trouble with a lot of, you know, your colleagues. And I always say, if you are not sure, you're in a new place and you're not sure, ask. Ask what is the admission protocol here for DKA? What is the policy? What is the DKA protocol? What is the sepsis pathway in this place? Of course, medicine is the same. But what will be different is the infrastructure available to you. Where else some regional hospitals are extremely good, they have everything, they have an ICU, they have all that. Some regional hospital may not have an ICU, they may only have a HDU. And so you're limited as to the number of, or the type of patients you can admit to the unit. Not because you don't know, or not because your doctors cannot manage it, but the infrastructure cannot allow you to admit those patients. So important, important, I cannot reinforce enough is understand the hospital policies and procedure. If in doubt, ask. Ask your colleagues, ask your bosses, so that, you know, in the morning during handover, people will not rain on you. Why did you admit this patient? Why did you not ask? And remember in Australia, the beauty is you can always ask and nobody will, will look at you in a weird way because they also understand that this is new to you. And if you will be returning to that place, you'll have understood the policies and then obviously at that your second rotation and stuff like that, you'll be better placed. The other important tip that I must say is communication. Communicate effectively. Communicate effectively. Communicate with the nurses, communicate with your junior and your senior doctors, colleagues and stuff like that. If you are not sure of something, obviously ask. If you do not know how to do, you know, e-referrals and stuff like that because you haven't worked in the public system, ask. If, um, and, and I always joke and say, be better tomorrow than you are today. If somebody has taken their time to teach you one, two, three, please learn so that tomorrow you're not asking the same thing over and over. You don't want to be a burden as well. You want to, to look like you're improving from day to day. You're learning the structures and the system and that you're getting better. And next time, hopefully you will be the one helping the others that will be coming along. So learn to communicate effectively, learn to ask, uh, learn to escalate care if you need to escalate care. The other thing that I must say, and I have seen some, I've worked with some law camps that are just horrible, not because of their skill set, but just as people. People can be extremely nasty to juniors. People are patronizing. People are just insubordinating the bosses. Don't do that. If you're hoping to get a locum gig and enjoy it, you don't want people making life difficult for you because you are difficult yourself. Get in there and be a team player. I'm not saying you suck up or anything like that. I'm just saying use your strengths, obviously, to be a part of the team, to make, you know, a positive influence to the team. Don't be nasty. Don't be a nasty medical registrars who make it very difficult for your juniors. But again, understand, you know, there's a sort of a balance because at the end of the day, uh, as a med reg, responsibility is to nurture or 
for lack of a better word, those that are under you to guide them, to direct them, and again, to give them feedback. You know, there's some people that would just not take feedback positively. Yes, those ones will be exceptions. But if everybody's complaining about you, mate, you're probably the problem. So try and fit in and just generally be a good, you know, good skills person. I mean, one-on-one, <laughs> -on -one, be nice to work and be friendly um, to people so that, you know, they can be friendly to you as well. Fourth or whatever point it is, fifth point is documentation. Document, document, document. Remember your law coming. The next mobility and mortality meeting, you may not be there if, you're law, if you've properly documented, you're going to be first and foremost helping your colleagues. But second, helping yourself and protecting yourself. Because remember, if something is not documented, it's not done. Even if you did it and you did it so well and you did not document, it was not done. And remember, this will be essential. Let's say you're an admitting registrar. You have admitted a patient with stroke. You have discussed with the stroke team. Okay, the stroke team has given you a plan. Document, for heaven's sake, document for the sake of your colleagues. Document so that people know that this discussion was hard, that these guys want you to repeat a CT scan in two days, that they're happy to rediscuss the case, they're happy if the patient clinically deteriorated, they're happy to transfer the patient, or they said, call me back tomorrow or something like that, and document whoever you spoke to. I cannot reinforce on the issue of documentation. It can create your career. It can um, mess your career. It can save you from litigation. And it can be helpful to your colleagues as well. You know, remember, as part of being a team player, you want to make life easy for everybody. You don't want to have consulted and then again they're coming to consult again. You just want things to be easier for, for your colleagues at the end of the day. The other thing is try and get support from your colleagues, from your agency, from your mentors, and from your supervisors. Get uh, support. If you need the support, let's say from your agency, and that's why I say you need to choose really well who's your agent. So that if things are not working out with the law, come, you know, you're not happy with the accommodation, it's not good, it has, you know, pests and stuff like that, or it is, you know, it's just not conducive for you. You need to be able to reach your agent and talk to them about it and hopefully get things sorted. And obviously, if you get to a point and you're not happy with your law, come, I mean, things are not improving and, you know, it's just not you're finding that it's not good for you. Remember, you also need to look after yourself. It is okay to tell your agent, look, I'm not happy about one, two, three. I've tried to resolve things and things are not happening. I know that my clause, my clause in the contract was this and this and this, but this is it. I cannot continue. It's not safe for me. It's not safe for my patients and stuff like that. And obviously find a way forward. The other thing that I have found important that I find people actually like is if you're flexible, okay? Remember, as a law come, you're coming in, you may be told that your contracted hours are 80 hours, okay? So, but then there's a sick call. If there's a sick call and you're available, be flexible. Be flexible enough to take up a shift. Let's say, you know, someone's not able to do a morning shift, but you're available to do an evening shift, but you know, and be flexible enough to, you know, to, to be a team player and take up those shifts and stuff like that. And obviously, if there are extra shifts required, be adaptable to change as well, because sometimes you may be rotated through the department. Like, let's say today you're working with boss A, tomorrow you're working with boss B, tomorrow the other day you, you know, um, I find people that, you know, are just sort of upset. They bring negative energy into the workplace. Why did this happen? Why have you swapped me? I'm not happy with nights. I was told I would not work nights and stuff like that. I mean, you know, part of being a, a locum is you know, flexibility, especially if it's within your means, try and be flexible. If it is what you cannot, what is the non-negotiable, like I always say, then that's understandable. But if it is within your means, try and be flexible, try and be adaptable. And then, um, uh, especially I must say is, um, be good a custodian, be, be like, be a good custodian of time. Time management also as a locum is key. Remember some jobs you may actually get a day rate. 
So depending on what day rate you've gotten, where else your colleagues will be filling in over time. Remember, as a locum, you may not get over time. So importantly to plan your day so well that if you must stay behind because you have a sick patient that you're sorting out, then well and good. But if you can plan your job and so that you knock off on time, and let's say you want to look around, you know, the place that you're coming, then knock off on time. But that will require you to manage your time really well, complete your tasks, do your clinical handover to your colleague, and leave when, you, when it is time to leave. But obviously, like I mentioned earlier, be flexible enough despite having a day rate, if you need to work the long shift or if you need to stay behind and sort out a sick patient that you well know, then by all means, that is what you need to do. Okay. The other thing that I must say is that are important is, is staying on top of your CPD points and CPD requirements because that will come in handy when you're renewing your registration and that will come in handy as well when, you know, like people are doing the accreditation and stuff like that. They want to ensure that uh, you're up to date with your CPD points. Use your locum time to expand your skill set. Um, do not de-skill when you're doing your law come just because, oh, I'm, I'm here for a few days or I, I don't feel like going the extra mile. I don't want to, you know, if, 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 we, if you're going to a rural area where they allow you to do more things, you know, when where colleagues are actually very skilled in this area, be, um, uh, be adaptable enough to learn a few skills. You know, there are people there that will teach you how to, you know, I've had very good, you know, senior colleagues, um, uh, you know, that are now IMGs here in the regionals that have taught me how to do one, two, three. And I am indebted to them today because obviously, you know, they've allowed you to learn a new skill here and there. As much as they will learn from you, you will also learn from them. So be, have that teachable spirit to be able to, to be taught one or two things. The other thing that I have found Lockham really good and one thing that has allowed me to have a successful Lockham is I've networked. You know, you are as rich as your network. You are as big as your network. Use your locum gig to network. Network personally and also professionally. You know, those bosses there could just be your references in future. Those bosses there may whisper out an opportunity that you did not know existed, okay? They will even allow you, they will even open doors for your friends and colleagues. They, you know, if there are opportunities for work, they may open up those opportunities for them. So remember, you are an advocate or or not only an advocate, you are like an ambassador. If you do really well, you know, people may come behind you that will actually get into those positions and, and, and just by the virtue that you did really well. So take an opportunity. I think I have very wonderful friends that I've met during Lockham, people that I still communicate with, people that we spend time together and laugh. That's a good opportunity for you to create networks. And I know, you know, some of the people that are really during my locum gig, during a night shift, we've chatted about, you know, my next vacation. They've told me, make sure you visit this and this and this. So you've actually gotten free advice that <laughs> you did not pay for. So that's really good. The other thing that I must say is important to ensure that you're successful is you need to self-reflect. As a human being, and more so as a doctor, you have to self-reflect. You have to see, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? What's the area that I can prove? Where can I use my strengths to ensure that the efficiency and the productivity of the job that I do are met? And what are some of my weaknesses that I need to build on? What is that specific case that I find so hard to deal with that I need to deal with? Remember to self-reflect and work on those areas that need to working on. The other thing, you know, law coming, especially if you're law coming for the financial need, remember it is very easy to make it like a rat race, to just work, 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 and work. But like I always say, remember life is not just about finances and money. Life is about making the most out of the experiences that are thrown your way. Take time to have work-life balance, okay? As much as I have said, be flexible and all, remember to look after yourself, you know? If, if, if you need to take time up and hang out with your friends, do that. If you need to finish on time and do go to the beach, walk along the beach, go for a swim, 
do that because that's part of locum life. I mean, you have the flexibility. That's where you're getting into locum. You have the flexibility to do things that you enjoy while you work. Okay. And then, um, like I always say, after your locum experience, take time to reflect. Okay. Take time and remember that because you're locuming, the financial obligations may be different. You know, you may need to put aside money for your tax. You may need to put aside money for your super. You may need to balance your accounts really well. Remember, as a pay YG, I never think about my tax. You know, somebody is paid to do that. But as a sole trader working as a locum doctor, you need to think about all this money that's coming in after I have given them my, my invoices. How much am I going to put aside? How much is going to GST? How much is going to tax and all that? So it's, you have to think about those things. Otherwise, if you spend everything that you're getting, the time for tax will come and you'll have a loan to pay. You know, you may have a big amount that you need to pay to the taxman and you don't have it. So put aside the important amounts of money that you need to put aside. The other thing is remember to provide feedback about your locum, but also seek feedback about areas where you need to improve. I always try to sit down with um, the HOD at the end of my locum and say, look, I've really enjoyed being here. Thank you for the opportunity you've given me. I've learned so much. I would really look forward to coming to work again in future. But is there any areas of improvement you think I can work on? Are there any specific areas that you think I'm lacking? So that going forward, I can work on those areas. And during such meetings, I find that, you know, people open up. People actually tell you your strengths and you feel really affirmed. But people also take time if there is something that they need to mention to you that you need that is an oversight or a blind spot then you can be able to deal with it number three obviously try and keep in touch with everybody when i finish i always send an email to the admins to say thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure working with you guys and i look forward to working with you in future you know, whether whether that's going to happen or not, I still always send it that, that email so that, again, you know, people remember you as, you know, you know, that that, you know, people remember you not only as Anna from Kenya, but people remember you <laughs> for what you did. And then lastly, lastly, remember, if you're doing locum for life or for a period of time, plan your next assignment Think about your next locum gig. Think about if you're getting back into work. Think about preparing yourself for your next role. And generally, take time to reflect on your locum uh, opportunity that you've had and plan for the future. So, in summary, locum is to be enjoyed. Don't be miserable on your locum gig. If you're miserable, it's probably time to move on. But remember, it takes uh, a bit of, you know, working on yourself and um, a bit of being, you know, vulnerable, flexible, adjustable to be able to enjoy um, your locum. So go out there, enjoy your locum. Remember to share, like and subscribe for more content. And like I always say, thank you so much for keeping it here.